Hi folks, we're going to take a look at ERC4626, which is a tokenized vault implementation. The, in the diagram here, the flow is essentially that we have our EOA, which, ha which has some assets or some tokens in it. We deposit those tokens into the ERC4626. That contract in turn gives us shares out. Now, the ERC4626 is actually an, e an extension of the ERC20, so that's where the tokenized vault comes in. So it's a vault that we deposit assets into, but it uses tokens to give us essentially a receipt back out. So we, we could deposit USDC into this vault, and it would give us back out CUSDC or XUSDC or something like that, which is a representation of our share in the vault. What the vault then does, it then has a pool of liquidity that's come from all these externally owned accounts, and it can implement a strategy. Now, I've just put a couple on here. It might go, it might put those tokens and those assets into a liquidity pool. It could put them into a lending um, and borrowing uh, protocol, or it could put it into staking, or it could do something entirely different. It could do some delta neutral strategy or some looping strategy or something like that. It doesn't really matter. The whole point of the of the uh, of the tokenized vault is that you can deposit assets into it. It'll give you shares as a receipt, and you can go back later and claim the assets in it. So if we were to deposit, say, 100 USDC in here, the vault might give us back 100 shares. Now, when the vault does its magic with its strategy, when we come back, the hope is that you put your 100 shares back in, but you get more than 100 back out because there's going to be an API associated with whatever strategy you hope. So that's the purpose of the of the vault. The reason it was it's been it was uh, the reason the EIP and the ERC were developed is because different protocols were implementing this to kind of tokenize vault um, contracts differently. And this is a standardization of it now with the ERC4626. So previously it would have Aave, Compound, so on. They would have had their own implementations of this. And then we have a standard way of doing it. So I have already initialized the foundry project. You just do forge in it and initialize your project. I've renamed the test to tokenvault.t.sol and the, and the main file to tokenvault.sol, okay? And we're just quickly going to, we're just gonna quickly do an implementation of 4626. So I'm gonna go here, I'm just gonna do forge install and it is transmissions 11 and it's soulmate. And this is gonna put the soulmate library into our lib folder. And that will allow us to import the ERC4626 and ERC20. So I will go down here to source tokens. And you see ERC4626 there and ERC20 there. So I'm just going to copy them. Copy relative path. And we're just going to do the two imports. ERC4626 from... Just the import ERC20 as well. Copy relative path. Should really fix this up in our remappings, but um, for now we'll just do them with the relative path. So we're just doing a demo of it. Okay. That's our imports. And then we're going to say is ERC4626. Now, just throwing an error because it needs stuff passed into the constructor, and we'll do that now in a second. So our constructor and we are going to pass in it's gonna pass in the ERC twenty token, which is going to be our asset and then string memory oh string memory I'm gonna name string memory memory symbol symbol there we go to pass into the actual constructor because that's passing to our own constructor then we're going to pass the constructor of the erc um oh sorry of the erc 4626 so asset name symbol there we go that's all we need to do so we're passing these into our own constructor and then we're passing them on We're just going to do our first function, which is going to be with the deposits. And it's going to be public. <coughs> then, you know what, we'll just sketch it out. I'm going to do a function. We'll do it with 
draw public. Okay, minimize that. Okay. So we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in a uint 256. Uh, we'll just call it assets. And then with the withdraw. And we're gonna be taking out, so we're gonna be going one two fifty six, and this time it's gonna be shares, okay? You can actually do it either way within the ERC forty six twenty six contract. So you can you can deposit by how many assets you're passing in, or you can actually deposit by saying how many shares you want to get back. But we're just gonna make it simple. We're just gonna do it by deposit, and then we'll withdraw. We're gonna so we're gonna deposit our assets, which is actually the token that we're passing into the vault. So just to be clear on this. The asset that we're passing in here is an ERC20 asset, okay? So this, for example, will be USDC. So we're saying we want to pass, deposit in USDC, and we want the uh, the 4626 vault and its strategy to make us more USD. So we want to go out there into DeFi, um, you know, money Legos, and we want you to get us more of this USDC. So that's the asset that you're passing in. The shares are essentially a receipt. Now they are a token, but they're a tokenized receipt that says, you can come back to this vault, deposit your shares, so withdraw, and we'll give you back the assets, and hopefully give you back more assets than you've initially put in in the first place. Okay, so that's the purpose of assets and shares in this in this uh, in this context. Okay, so um, other deposit function just to do one require. So we're going to say require that the assets are greater than zero, greater than zero, and zero assets uh, deposited. We call it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to call the deposit function on the ERC forty six uh, on the ERC forty six uh, um, thing itself, and then we'll just pass in message dot sender. There we go. Oh, sorry, underscore is deposit. We're just doing deposit that one there. Okay. And then for withdraw, we're just going to do really require on shares greater than zero. Same zero shares sent to withdraw against perfect. There we go. And then we do withdraw. Uh, with shares, it's going to be shares. And we're going to send message to sender twice. And the reason for this, to show you now in a second, is because the withdraw function, if you click on this, it'll, it should open up in our ERC um, 4626. And you see that the withdraw takes assets, the receiver, and the owner. Okay. Now you could, we could pass in a receiver and an owner, but in th this case, just for the for the illustrative purposes of the video, we just want to say that the person withdrawn is the receiver of the of the assets and the owner of the, of the of the assets. So I just want to simplify it more than anything. But you can see that you can do much more with it if you wanted to say, you know, it could be, it could be another contract saying, okay, here's some here's some um, shares uh, belonging to. Or here's some uh, here's some shares and the assets belong to this user or something like that. But it's just that's just um just the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna pretend that it's it's coming from the, the user themselves, okay? Okay. So you can see here where um it's saying token vault should be marked as abstract, okay? So the reason for that is that in our ERC forty six twenty six, this is an abstract contract contract and what we have down here is if you see it's expecting us to implement um it's expecting us to implement stuff like total assets there that's not that's not being finished so what we're going to do is we're going to go back here and we're just going to do a function that's going to be total assets and it's going to be public view over all right grab returns and it returns a un 256 here we go. I'm just gonna say return. That's gonna be asset balance of. And what we're doing here is gonna do an address dot this. Okay. Now you see token vault's no longer throwing an error. And um, what we're doing here is so again the total assets. This can be the total assets in the vault. And to get that, what you're really saying is the asset that this vault takes in, so the, the, the ERC-20 asset, so say it's USDC, you're actually saying to get the total assets that are in the vault, 
on the asset itself called balance of for this address because th what you're doing is you're actually giving the tokens over to this address so that's what you're doing there if you want to find out all the assets that are in this vault you pretty much just call on usdc the address of the vault and uh, the balance of the address and you'll, and then you'll get it back so that's that's what that is there um and what we're going to do is yeah so that's that's a basic implementation just gonna have one lads last thing in here but just for we're going to use for testing total shares of user user singular view address view user public view public view returns Mint 256 and um, we should say return this dot balance of I would say user now why am I doing that what why does why am I saying this dot balance off on the ERC 4626 contract and the reason for that is that the ERC 4626 contract is also an ERC 20 contract so ERC 4626 is ERC 20 you click in there find it there balance of there we are there sorry so yeah so on balance of uh, the mapping there we can pass in the address of the user and it'll give us back the balance because ERC 4626 Use the ERC20 tokens too as your receipt, and that's why we'll, that's why we'll, that will give us back our shares. So the asset itself is what we want, but this is used kind of essentially it's used for accounting. So this is what you get back as your shares. So we are going to we're also going to create another um we're going to create another file here, new file, and we're just going to call it USDC. That's all. Um, so copy, yeah, copy this in there. Don't need ERC forty six twenty six. Contract USCC is ERC twenty. There we go. Constructor. ERC20, and we're just going to pass this in, so we'll just do this. So we're going to pretend that it's actually USDC. So USD circle is the name. Circle, that's spelled correct, isn't it? And we're just going to say, which is USDC. And then we're going to say that the decimals is 18 and this. Now, I think the decimals in USDC is actually 8 on ETH mainnet, so just um, be careful with that. But we're just, we're just, um, just for demo purposes, we're make it 18. Press recipient. We do UN two hundred and fifty six amounts. Uh, external. There we go. Uh, should we just mint? I'm just call mint Recip recipient and amounts. So we're just calling that on the ERC twenty contract there. So what we're, we're doing here is we're in the constructor. We're gonna we're gonna create USD circle. Call it USDC with eighteen decimals, and then we're gonna mint it to the recipient. Um, or mint to the recipient whatever amount we want so this is just for our testing and uh, for using for testing our contract because we are going to need the asset again as i said in the real world we'd have a usdc you'd put it into this vault and you'd want the vault to do something with it and get you back more usdc and that's what we're going to do we're going to pass our erc20 token in here in our tests and then we're gonna we're gonna hopefully get it to give us back more of those assets